I'm going to need my therapist for this. Hi everyone, it's Kirchi and welcome to my very first Q&A. I asked you guys to send me a bunch of questions on whatever you're curious about when it comes to my collection or myself or anything at all, and you did. Before we get started, I just want to wish everyone a happy new year. It's a new year, lots of things to look forward to, and I hope that this new year brings a lot of good luck and good things to all of us. You'll also notice that my collection is right behind me. Since this is a special video, I wanted to change up my background and I want you guys to see how I display my collection. This is about half-ish of what I own. I also have a lot of boxed toys right over here on this desk and some of you might have seen it on my Instagram story. There's also more way up top and way below that's out of frame. Basically, I have a lot of toys that go beyond Polly Pockets at this point. Let's go ahead and get started with the questions. I'm gonna pull them up on my phone, and I am going to read these based on the order that I received them, so I'm going to be flipping between YouTube and Instagram so that First come, first serve, I read everybody's questions in order. If I pick your question, I will give you a shout out. If I don't pick your question, and if you don't get a shout out, please don't get offended. It's either because someone had already asked your question, or maybe your question is a little too personal for me to answer, but know that all of you are extremely important to me. I read all of your comments, and as you guys have seen, I'm very interactive. I respond to pretty much everyone, but I will answer 99.9% .9 of these. So let's get started. Question number one is from Emma Madden. Hi, Emma. What is your favorite compact? My favorite compact is Jewel Magic Ball. This is my very first Polly Pocket when I was a kid, and I just think it looks really unique and mystical. As girly as I am, I also love witchy things, and this is as witchy as it gets when it comes to Polly Pockets. And it's not even really witch theme, it's more of like jewels. I guess. But again, it's really more of the significance of it because it is the first Polly Pocket that I've had and it's just very special to me. It holds a lot of memories for me. This next question is from Mango Squish. Hi Mango Squish. Your name sounds like a Shopkins name. Mango Squish. Do you have any pets? I have three rescue dogs. Their names are Gizmo, Gadget, and Glitter. Why did we choose G names for them? I don't know. It just happened. This is from Rajnish Agni. Poetry. I'm so sorry if I just completely butchered your name. You're a very special person and don't let my bad pronunciation ruin your day. What is your Kirchi love story and how many crushes do you have? So I wasn't allowed to date for the longest time. My mom was extremely strict and I never brought boys over to the house. When I finally started dating, I was already 17 or 18 years old. And of course those relationships were just very naive, you know, young love type stuff. I was also a complete nerd and geek growing up. I got straight A's in school till college. That's when my grades started to... And I loved video games and a game that I was extremely obsessed with was World of Warcraft. In fact, they just released a new expansion, so I got back into the game after quitting for years, but unfortunately I'm too busy and it just doesn't really hold my interest as much as it used to. Anyway, back to the story, the Kirchi love story. In World of Warcraft, that's when I actually met my husband. And yes, when you meet someone online, it's always like, are they even a real person? Are they faking it? Are they catfishing me? But he turned out to be very real and we got to know each other and we dated for four years till we got married and we've been together for 10 years. So I guess the lesson there is you never know when or where you'll meet your soulmate. You just kind of have to go with the flow. As far as how many crushes I've had, I've had tons and tons of crushes. I have a crush on Henry Cavill and Chris Evans. This question is from Rachel Cardi. Hello, Rachel. When did you start collecting? I started collecting in 2019, August. I remember the month. So it really hasn't been that long. It's been a little over a year and that's not that long to me. I basically had to start all over because the Polly Pockets I had as a kid we gave away. I had no idea how valuable they would be and of course I had no idea that I would want to collect them as an adult. But yeah, I started August 2019 and 
I'm still going and I'm gonna keep going till I can't go no more. This is from Atlantics. Hello there. Favorite modern Polly Pocket set. This is gonna be a sneak preview of my next video, but I actually really love the brand new 2020 upgraded Polly Pocket sets. Ta-da! Some of you guys have seen these before and have messaged me that these existed in the first place. The hinge is back. We're gonna talk more about that in next week's video when I showcase all of these. But I'm torn between the Corgi butt and this hedgehog. I guess I would pick the corgi butt because it's a corgi butt. Is there any other reason? But the hedgehog has a really cute interior. It's like kitty cats and pet things. I don't know, I'm torn between the two, but so far I am loving these upgraded Polly Pockets. This next question is from Willy Wonka. How are you doing? I love your chocolates. Can you make a whole Polly Pocket collection video? Also, what are you planning to do when you've showcased all of your Pollies? Are you going to review other toys like dolls or Polly Pocket style toys? When I have showcased all of my Pollies, which is gonna take a long time because there are tons of Pollies out there and there are also tons that I haven't yet collected because they're either too rare or too expensive. So it is gonna take a while, but one day when I've showcased every single Polly ever, I am gonna move on to other compact toys and other toys that I just find generally interesting and fun. You guys have already seen that I have started to collect outside Polly Pockets. I have Shopkins, I have random dolls, I have Frozen, Hello Kitty. And as far as reviewing them, I wouldn't really call myself a reviewer because I'm not necessarily trying to sell you on these toys. It's really more me showcasing my collection because the fact that I've already bought them means that I like them. I may have critiques on some of these toys, but I generally like them. That's why I've chosen to collect them. And yes, I am starting to collect dolls as well because in my last video where I showcased the Shopkins pop-up dolls, I just fell in love with how they look. And several people pointed out that they're going to discontinue the Shopkins dolls, so I have to get them. This next question is from Lily B. Hello. I'm wondering as a collector, do you open your Polly Pockets often and or play with them? What do you enjoy most about collecting? Sometimes when I'm feeling down, I actually open a random compact, whatever I'm feeling that day, and I just take a look inside and just bask in the 90s memories. As far as sitting down and actually playing with them, the only time I ever really do that is when I'm filming a showcase, which is the reason why I started to do these showcase videos in the first place, because actually sitting down and playing with them isn't very engaging to me as an adult, but I do love that I get to play with them in front of the camera and show all of you guys. What I enjoy most about collecting is, I guess just seeing them displayed like this, it's just so satisfying. I also really love organizing and making things look very neat and uniform. And the fact that it just makes me really happy, it just makes me feel good. There's really no higher reason than the fact that it just makes me happy. And things that make you happy don't really need a complex explanation. These questions are from Short Keiku. Hello, Short Keiku. What's your name? My real name is Katrina, or Kat for short, and that's what I go by at work. My coworkers call me that. My parents call me that. Kirchi is my nickname that I got in high school, and my husband, my best friend, and half of my in-laws call me Kirchi. So I guess it's a mixed bag. Half of the important people in my life call me Kat. The other half of the important people in my life call me Kirchi. What is your age? I am currently 31 years old. I'm at that age where I kind of forget how old I am. Am I 31? Am I 32? I just kind of round and tell people I'm 30 and I'm probably gonna be doing that till I start to visibly show aging. What are your favorite colors? I really like pink and purple. They're just, they go so well together. They're my two best friends. Do you have any children? I actually have three. I have three rescues. As far as humans go, I do not have human children and I actually have chosen not to have kids. It was actually a decision that I made very early on. I think I was about six years old. And of course the adults around me were saying throughout my entire childhood that I'm gonna change my mind. I don't know yet. I haven't met the right person yet, blah, blah, blah. But I have met the right person. I've been with him for 10 years. And when we first started dating, one of the things I told him was, I don't want kids, so if that's gonna be a problem, this can't work out. But luckily we're both on the same page about that and it's just 
a personal choice. I have no business being responsible for another human life anyway. I mean, look at me. This next question is from Secreto. I have not seen any Disney Polly Pockets in your collection. Do you plan to collect those? I actually plan to collect those as soon as I'm willing to spend however much they cost right now. I just have other compacts and other toys that are higher in priority. I also just bought the Cinderella Castle, which I'm going to showcase soon as well. The sun is starting to set, so I have this light ray on me. This is going to be a thing. Okay, next question is from Suchita Carby. Again, I'm sorry if I butchered that name. You are a very special person. Don't let me ruin your day. What is the number of Polly Pocket compact sets? So they're asking how many I have in my collection. I don't know how many Polly Pockets exactly, but I can tell you how many I have total. So Polly Pockets, Shopkins, other compact toys. I actually keep a log of every single toy in my collection because I love spreadsheets. I am a spreadsheet nerd. And I'm going to tell you right now, as soon as I pull up the spreadsheet, give me a moment. I have a total of 369 sets. This doesn't include dolls and other random 90s toys that I just happen to like. It would have been cool if I had just added one more so it could be 370 and it could be an even number. But there you have it, 369. This next question is from Alexa26. Hello Alexa. If you could have any job in the world, what would it be and why? Once upon a time, I actually wanted to be a veterinarian because I love animals. As a kid, it's one of those I love animals, so it's a no-brainer that I should be a veterinarian type of situations. But as I got older, I realized that being a veterinarian is actually a pretty heartbreaking career. Veterinarians end up putting a lot of animals down. I've even heard nightmare stories of people who would bring in perfectly healthy animals that they just don't want to take care of and have asked vets to just put them down. That is so extremely heartbreaking to me that it makes me tear up just thinking about it because I'm extremely sensitive when it comes to animals and animal abuse and things like that. The other job that I've always wanted to have is to be a voiceover, just a voice actor for a cartoon. I just think it's really cool, especially since nowadays you can do it from home. A lot of super popular voice actors like Tara Strong, they have their own studio in their house and they would be asked to record, you know, like a voice clip or something for whatever they're working on and they would just record it in their studio and send it in. That is super dope. Another question from Alexa is, what was the best day of your life and why? The best day of my life is coming to America. Nothing could ever beat that because it was a completely different lifestyle change. We grew up struggling a lot and I don't want to get into super personal stuff, but when I came to America, it was a breath of fresh air. My sister and I also hadn't seen our mom in about four years because it took her really long to get our visas and to get us over to the US. The whole immigration process is extremely difficult and tedious and expensive. But when we finally arrived, it was amazing. It was a breath of fresh air. Everything was brand new. And my parents had surprised my sister and me with a bunch of toys, Barbies, Polly Pockets, of course, and a bunch of art supplies, which were a dream to me because I have loved art my entire life. And having all the supplies that I need to create really cool stuff has made me the person I am today. So thank you, mom and dad. I love you. This next question is from Mia M. Hi, Mia. In your earlier videos, you made resin ornaments for your holiday tree. I'm curious to know what was your Christmas tree theme this year. It's so funny that you mentioned my ornaments because I had planned on doing a holiday tree with every month, every holiday, basically. And right around April, which was Easter, I was set to make Easter ornaments and I just, became really uninspired. So the last set of ornaments I made were St. Patrick's. And as far as my Christmas tree, which I have had up all year, I just went back to the sea themed ornaments because my house has kind of an ocean beachy theme anyway. So I just went back to the sea themed ornaments to match the rest of my house aesthetics. And I was too lazy to make actual Christmas ornaments. Get out of my face. I really don't like this whole daylight saving business because this sun should not be here right now. It's still really early and the sun is already like eye level. This one is from Superman. 
Hi Superman, thank you for saving America. Could you show the Lego Princess storybooks? They are really cute and are like a Polly Pocket style. I actually have them. They are way up there in my closet. I just keep getting distracted by other toys that I want to showcase. Every time I buy a new one, I get super excited and I'm like, I'm gonna showcase this, I'm gonna showcase this. And then another one just kind of takes my attention. But yes, I will absolutely showcase them. They are just way up there. I bought them a long time ago and soon ish. This one is from Usagi Tsukino, The Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. What's you and your husband's jobs? I am a senior product designer, but this is for website and interfaces, not literal products that you can hold with your hand. Although with my shops, I do design my own products, so that applies there too. And I recently got promoted to a management role where I manage my own team of designers. That is a whole new role for me and I'm super excited to keep doing it and keep improving at it. My husband is a principal software engineer. I don't even want to begin to explain what he does because it's very complicated, but he has a very important job. Usagi Tsukino also asked, have you ever gotten scammed when buying a toy online before? I don't know if this was a scam, but I ordered something on eBay and it just never arrived. The seller also completely ghosted me and I was looking at the reviews and they had done the same thing to a bunch of other people. I wouldn't necessarily call that a scam because who knows what happened to that person. I don't know what their situation is. Maybe they got hurt. I don't know. But out of the hundreds and hundreds of toys that I bought online, that was really the only time that I've gotten scammed. And eBay is very good at giving you a refund if things like that happen. So it was really very painless. They gave me my money back and that was that. This one is from Melissa Fernandez. Hi, Melissa. How did you become a collector? So I became a collector, like I said, around August, 2019. And it really wasn't random. Some of my friends were kind of like, oh, you started doing Polly Pocket stuff randomly. Where did that come from? Suddenly you have a YouTube channel and everything. What is going on with you? But I've been thinking about collecting Polly Pockets two years prior. And apparently every year I would ask my dad if he still had my old Polly Pockets and he would tell me, Every year you ask me that, I don't have your old Polly Pockets. But whenever I do something big like this, I am a total planner. I plan everything out, I write everything down. And what finally made me officially start collecting is when my mother-in-law had given me the little Toy Story Polly Pocket from Toy Story 4. And when I opened the compact, I just felt so warm and fuzzy inside. Like it was just such a good feeling opening it up and seeing the little world inside. So I thought I would just collect the ones that I like not go crazy like this. So I got Jewel Magic Ball, of course, it's my favorite one. And when I received it, again, I was just filled with so much joy, so many warm and fuzzy feelings, and finally getting to hold those little tiny characters, it just sparked something in me. So at that point, I decided that I am gonna start collecting, I'm gonna go all out. But yeah, what started my collection is just my general feeling of warm and fuzziness and nostalgia and actually getting to hold a Polly Pocket that I haven't held in decades just sparked a lot of feelings for me. This one is from Charlie Dog. Hi, Charlie. Would you ever consider getting into other toy brands that are much different from Polly? I've already started. I have Shopkins over here. I also have other compact toys from Rement, which are way up here that you guys can't see. And there are a bunch more out there that are super rare and I'm on the lookout. And of course, if you guys discover any other compact toys or any cute toys at all that you think I should add to my collection, let me know. This question is from Sinead. Hello there. I hope I said that right. It is Sinead. It's Irish, I believe. My husband is also Irish, so if I mispronounce that, he would be very disappointed. What would you say to people who find it hard to be themselves when it comes to their interests? This is a loaded question. I'm gonna need my therapist for this. I'm not really sure because being yourself is honestly really hard. It's one of the hardest things we'll ever have to do as individuals. And we're never really 100% ourselves because when we're at work, we have to act a certain way. When we talk to specific people, we have to act a certain way. So I don't think we're ever 100% ourselves just to keep things civilized and professional, I guess. But in terms of being authentic, which is a totally different thing, I would say think about the alternative, right? So if you were way too self-conscious about your interests or you know who you are as a person the alternative would be to keep lying to yourself and to keep pretending and a lifetime of that is a lot more painful than actually just being authentic there was a time in my life in middle school especially when i first started to really see my friends blossom and become really beautiful and i was still this 
dumpy looking kid and I just felt really bad about myself. I had low self-esteem and I would try very very hard to dress the way everyone else is dressing. I look back on my old photos right around that time and I just cringe because looking back I, that was not me. I was trying way too hard and I've come to find that really no one cares. No one cared back then, no one cares now. You may think that people are always scrutinizing you and watching you every step of the way but fact is no one really cares about you. It sounds negative but it's actually a very positive thing and liberating thing to know that most of us are actually just focused on ourselves. We're not focused on other people, so other people aren't really focused on you. You may receive a few negative comments, but they just kind of come and go. They're not a big deal. But yes, being your true authentic self is hard because it's a battle that you ultimately have to fight with yourself. It's not a battle that you have with kids at school or with your parents because people are gonna have their opinions no matter what, but it's really up to you to decide what you wanna do. Do you care about these opinions or do you wanna do what you wanna do? That's just my point of view. That's my perspective from my own personal experiences. I was different growing up. I'm different now. I'm an adult with a toy obsession. I'm also in a management position and I still wear very bright outfits with lots of glitter on my face. And that's just the way I like it. I'm getting thirsty answering all of these questions. This is how I get my daily water intake. So I think this is a quarter gallon. The sun is setting. My lighting has changed. You may not notice because I'm editing the lighting in post-production. Edit it in post, as they say. I'm trying to sit back on my stool here. This next question is from Milo the Burb. Hello, Milo the Burb. Do you like candy? Yes, Milo the Burb, I do like candy. In fact, I like candy a little too much. This one is from Taijin Elisa Guder. I'm just so awesome at pronouncing these names. I would like to see a room tour. Are you planning a video like this in the future? So if you were one of the few people who subscribed to me very early, I'm talking back when I had less than 100 subscribers, then you might have seen a room tour that I actually released. It was very, very early in my YouTube channel, and the more I improved in my videos and the more comfortable I got in front of the camera, I looked back on my room tour and just felt very cringy. Have you ever looked back on your old self and you're just like, ugh? If you're the lucky few who have seen it, then you know what my room looks like. And at the time, I didn't have a lot of Polly Pockets. I had maybe like just this part, but I think maybe someday I'll do another one once I upgraded my space because I'm actually in a very small space right now. My collection is growing. I also have my crafting station and I have my workstation where I work at work and then I work my personal projects. So I just don't really have a lot of space. When I do upgrade my space, whenever that will be, I will do another room tour, but for now, if you're the lucky few who have seen my old room tour, then that's just a very special treat for you guys for being very early subscribers. <laughs> this is from Addison Arthur. Hello, Addison. What's your favorite vintage Polly Pocket that's too rare and expensive to get? The one that's in the back of my mind is the birthday cake one. It has bows all around it, and when you open it, there's a giant birthday cake inside. That's around 200 plus dollars right now and i can buy so many toys for 200 dollars so spending that much on one set i just can't get myself to do it right now this is from my doll obsession hello there do you like shopkins little secrets more or the modern Polly pockets more i absolutely love shopkins i actually would put them just right under the vintage Polly pockets that's how much I love them. So yes, I do love them more than the modern Polly Pockets because they look more like the vintage Polly Pockets. They've done a really good job of that. And the characters are inspired by Polly, but they're different enough to be interesting. They have different skin tones, different hair colors, and I hear rumors that they're no longer making compact sets or play sets, and I really hope that's not true because I absolutely love Shopkins. This next question is from Erin Wynans. Hi, Erin. As you collect, have you gotten any great deals on Polly Pockets? Have you overpaid for any or regretted purchases? I buy pretty much all of my vintage Polly Pockets and a good portion of Shopkins on eBay. And I found that there are two types of eBay sellers. There's the type who just wants to get rid of their stuff. Maybe they found some old toys in their attic and they're getting rid of it. They wanna make a few bucks. 
have it be done and over with. And then there's the other type who treats eBay as their actual business. So they go out, they hunt for bargains, they go to flea markets, they go to clearance sales, all of these things. So the first type of seller, the one who just wants to get rid of their stuff, I've come to find that you can kind of make a deal with them, especially if they're getting rid of a lot of stuff. I remember this one particular seller just made an account that day, wanted to get rid of a bunch of complete Polly Pockets. I ended up buying around 10 from them and since I had bought so much I asked if I could get some sort of bulk discount and they said yes because they just want to get rid of it. I'm buying a lot. They don't have to wait for the next buyer because I'm already there ready to buy all the stuff. The same person was also selling a bunch of Polyvilles that I completely regret not buying because at the time I just wasn't ready to buy Polyvilles. But I always think about that seller because I really wanted those polybills. But the type of eBay seller who treats eBay like their actual business, they're a little bit tougher to make a deal with because they're generally pretty confident that they're gonna find a buyer. They're also a more experienced seller, so they're probably selling it on other platforms. But whenever I buy multiple sets from a seller, I just like to ask to see what they say and usually they're pretty nice. They'll give me a bit of a discount because I'm buying multiple sets. I have definitely overpaid for a few things right over here. Here. I'm not sure if you guys can see, but I have some new in box. I have the handheld video game and I have the jewelry sets. And I definitely overpaid for those and I think I was going through a bit of a rough patch. I remember this was back in November when I got really sick and I just felt so down on myself because I hadn't been productive. So I was basically just on my couch shopping and I saw these and I bought them. <laughs> I definitely overpaid for them and one of them said that it was new in box and it actually came kind of opened. I wouldn't say I regret it though. I wouldn't say I really regret any of this because I wouldn't return any of it. I love my entire collection. This is from Titan2034. If you had the opportunity to work with Bluebird and create a Polly Pocket based on yourself, how would you design your Polly Pocket figure? And what shape would the compact be? And what would be in the inside? Also, what would the name of the compact playset be called? I.e. Kirchie's apartment or Kirchie's workroom. Whew, that was a long paragraph. First of all, if I got the opportunity to work with Bluebird, I would spontaneously combust. If Mattel asked me to design a Polly Pocket set for them, I, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. My little figure would have purple hair. I actually need to dye my hair. This has been a year, believe it or not, since I dyed it, but it would be all purple. My outfit would be a pink dress, maybe with some glitter on it. I would also have a little dog companion, maybe two or three or 10, because I love dogs. The shape would be a heart. It's my favorite shape. I actually really like the quilted hearts, but I think I would do something like, lace hearts. Just something really cute and girly and it would have glitter on it. The inside would be my entire crawfish. So it would have my crafting station, my computer, my Polly Pocket collection. It would be completely pink with glitter. I would call it Kirchie's Pink Palace. This next question is from Kid or Not. What do you take great interest in aside from Polly Pockets and graphic designing? My shops, my handmade shops are very important to me. Right now I have my shop Pick Squeaks, which is my handmade pet ID tags and pet accessories. And my handmade jewelry shop Pixie Hearts is going to open this year. I'm going to work very hard to open it this year because I have so many fun and cool jewelry designs. I also still really like video games and I recently got back into Guild Wars 2 which is a really fun casual game. I also like binge watching TV shows. I'm currently binge watching Outlander which is really awesome and interesting. This next question is from KKE Angela. Hello Angela. Which Polly Pockets do you treasure most? Obviously Jewel Magic Ball is very special to me. I also love the giant star Fairy Light Wonderland. Magical Move in Polyville which is right over here. I don't know what I'm pointing at because you can't see but over here is also the Lucy Locket Cottage which my husband gifted me. That has special significance to me because my husband actually went out and spoke to the seller and basically did what I do when I buy vintage toys and for him to go out and do that is just a really nice thing to do. This one is from Ashley Galbraith. Hello Ashley, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name. I'm just terrible. How do you store your Polly Pockets? Do you display them? 
Do you purchase all new sets or are there some sets you choose not to get? This is how I display my Polly Pockets. These are actually nail polish organizers that I got on Amazon. If you go on Amazon and you search nail polish organizers, a bunch will come up and all of them pretty much work. Over here, where you see these modern ones, these are just little tiny shelves. They're pretty much used to display figurines like Funko Pops. I also bought these white shelves on Amazon and they're just folding shelves, no assembly required. The biggest thing though are these nail polish organizers because they fit the compacts perfectly. I try to get new sets when I can. For example, with Shopkins, it's still a fairly modern toy, so there are a lot of new in box sets sets out there. For the vintage ones, the newer in-box sets are not really as available unless you want to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars, which I don't. It depends on the set, really. I just kind of have to do my own research and get a feel for it. But with the newer toys, I do get them new in box. As far as some sets that I choose not to get, at this point, I've pretty much made the decision to buy all of them. I actually started buying the modern Polyvilles as well. Here's one, and it's slightly open, so yikes. I don't like them as much, but at this point, I'm too deep in my collection and they're still cute. I don't hate them. They just don't excite me as much, but I'm in too deep. I'm just going to add them to my collection. Next question. This is from Helena Inora Mitsako. Again, another apology. Have you ever planned to collect any set of Polyville? So yes, I did start collecting Polyvilles. Actually, I started with the Shopkins version of Polyville and with the modern Polyvilles because they're just more attainable. They're easier to get. I actually don't have any vintage Polyvilles right now. The only vintage Polyville I have is the Magical Move-In Polyville. I'm trying to work out a deal with some sellers to see if I can buy in bulk, but so far none of them have responded to me. They probably think I'm some sort of scammer, but it is what it is. I will eventually get vintage Polyvilles I'm just focusing on the ones that are easier to get. This one is from Jacinda Sani. What is your toothbrush color? White. It's an electric toothbrush, so it's just white. You would think it'd be pink, but this is from Shadia Rashid, which is your favorite Shopkins Little Secrets compact. So I actually love all of these lock ones. I don't have a favorite. They're all so cute, so unique, so beautiful. They look like the vintage Polly Pockets. I can't pick a favorite, I guess, Maybe this white one, I think that was the wedding one just because it looks very pastel and soft and girly, but they're all super awesome. This is from Little Miss Iconic. Are you a girly girl or a tomboy or both? I think it's pretty obvious that I am a girly girl. I love everything pink. I love glitter. I have glitter on my eyes right now and I slap them on there. Whatever happens, happens. I love glitter. Their other question is, what inspired you to make a channel? So I have a lot going on in my life. I do have a full-time job. I have my shops. But despite all of these things going on, I felt like something was missing. I wasn't entirely sure what it was. I was talking to my husband about it and I was thinking maybe he and I could start our own business or build an app together. Nothing was really sticking. And when I got a few Polly Pocket sets, I thought about making stop motion animation videos where I would tell stories of the little characters. That was my original plan, but when I sat down in front of the camera, I just started playing with them. And that's basically how the showcase series started, where I would just show every single detail of a toy. And that was very engaging for me because as a designer, I'm very detail oriented. So I kind of notice everything, maybe not everything because I know I have missed little bits of nooks and crannies there, but it's just fun for me to deep dive and look into every single one of these compacts because they're so tiny and it's just fun to look inside. So that's really the inspiration for starting a channel. I just wanted to kind of show these little tiny worlds. I get a lot of comments saying that Polly Pockets is my childhood toy and I'm so glad that you're showcasing these because they're bringing back a lot of good memories. And that's really the best thing. It's just about, you know, bringing up the good times because Growing up kind of sucks. For me, I absolutely refuse to grow up. Getting old is mandatory, growing up is optional. There's your inspirational quote for the day. This next one is from Lily Mormon. Hello there. What did your family say that you collect vintage Polly Pockets? My dad is actually a collector. He collects model trains and cars. He even makes little tiny people 
with little worlds. His own version of Polly Pockets basically, but they're not in compacts, they're like out on display. So he and I share that same interest in collecting and we actually talk a lot about our collections. And whenever we get new pieces to add to our collection, we send each other pictures. My husband, of course, supports my collection. He supports the fact that I take great interest and great obsession in this and that it makes me happy. My mom doesn't really care about my collection so much as she cares about the fact that I have a YouTube channel. She watches every single one of my videos. She also says that she likes to leave them on in the background just to hear my voice, which I think is super sweet. My sister doesn't really care. She's in her own world. I do send her pictures of the ones she had as a kid and she'll just kind of say, I don't remember that or, oh, that's cute and that's that. This next question is from Lucas McClelland. Hello Lucas. What are your thoughts about Funko announcing the Polly Pocket Pop after you made your video making your own? Did they contact you at all? Drama! So this is actually really funny because one day I woke up and I had received a handful of messages on Instagram of people telling me that there is now an official Polly Pocket Funko Pop. Not only that, but it looked exactly like the one I made. So here's the thing. I don't want to be one of those people who thinks I'm cooler than I actually am, but it is a little sus that they finally made a Polly Pocket after my video because Polly has been around for 30 years She's still around. She has her own TV show. They're still making new Polly Pocket toys. There's a Funko for everything, but there hasn't been one for Polly till after my video. And Polly is not my original character. Obviously, I took something that already existed and I just made it into a Funko. But a couple people pointed out that the official Polly Pocket Funko took the exact same style, the exact same dress with the bow tie, with the same hairstyle, the same pose. All they did was change the colors. So instead of a pink dress, they made it blue. But no, they didn't contact me. They didn't reach out to me or even acknowledge me in any way. And they don't really have to, I guess, because again, Polly is not my original character. I was hoping that they would send me a free one, but since they didn't, I just pre-ordered it. Either way, I'm excited that it's finally here. I'm excited that all of you guys get to have her because everyone should have a Polly Pocket Funko. I'm not that bitter about it. I guess I just wish that they would have sent me a free one since it's only $10. But the bigger picture is we finally get a Funko. You can pre-order it on Amazon on Hot Topic, Entertainment Earth. It's kind of everywhere, so I'm excited to get it. This next question is from Laura Zach. Hello, Laura. Where did you study design? Do you work as a freelance designer? And what is your ancestry? Interesting questions. I went to a four-year state university to study design, but it actually took me six years to graduate college because I was too obsessed with World of Warcraft and I ended up failing a bunch of classes because my priorities were just not quite there. I also taught myself how to design and how to use the design programs. I worked on a lot of personal projects because I'm just naturally passionate about design and creating as a whole. So by the time I got to college, none of the classes really helped me. The only class that helped me was typography and it is the one class that I highly recommend you take if you are interested in graphic design. It doesn't matter how good your illustrations are or how good your actual design work is. If you can't master typography, if you don't know how to display fonts in a nice way, it will destroy your entire design. As far as freelancing goes, I kind of still freelance. I am so extremely busy, especially having been promoted at work, which has given me lots more to do. I don't have time to freelance, but once in a while I'll pick up a project for a friend just as a favor so that they don't have to go out looking for other graphic designers. But my freelance work mostly consists of logo design and I'll be honest, I absolutely hate logo design. I have designed so many logos, including my own logos for my shops and for my YouTube. I've also done logos at work. I've done logos for friends. Logos, logos, logos. I just don't like it. I'm good at it and I'll do it, but I'll be sad. What is my ancestry? I will tell you exactly what it is because I recently just did 23andMe. I basically spit in a cup, sent it over to them, and they sent me my results. I'm pulling up the app. I am 
79.4% Filipino, 15.8% Chinese, 1.6% Vietnamese, and the remaining 1.4% is just a bunch of random stuff that they somehow pulled up from my ancestors. I don't know how this works. My mom was actually disappointed in these results because she has convinced herself that I am Spanish because her grandpa was Spanish, her dad, my grandfather, was half Spanish, I guess. But both my sister and I did ancestry testing and we don't have Spanish. But my mom, despite reading these results, still thinks we're Spanish. But science doesn't lie. It says right here. This is from Rini Lizef. Hello there. I would like to see you share the top list of reasons why we collect toys to help our non-collector friends understand why we collect toys, especially for those of us who are 90s kids all grown up. That is a really good question because people who don't collect things might not necessarily understand why people choose to collect things. They may be fascinated with collections. My non-collector friends are fascinated by this, but they might not necessarily understand why I've chosen to hoard stuff in this way. My dad calls it organized hoarding. Okay, so reason number one, it just makes us happy, it makes us smile, makes our day better. Number two, there is something very satisfying about hunting down these toys, these sets, or whatever it is that you collect, and there's this sense of accomplishment that you feel whenever you acquire a new thing to add to your collection. And number three, I guess, would be the fact that it's just really satisfying seeing them displayed like this. For me, I feel like I'm in a toy store whenever I come into my room, when I start my day, I start my work day, I come into my room and I'm just met with all of this goodness and it just makes me smile. This is from Alina Gretti, another mispronounced name, I apologize. Are you gonna sell your self-made Polly Pockets? I would absolutely love to. I would love to have my own compact toy line. In fact, I'm going to research as to how I can actually do that because I have handmade my own compact toy before. It was my Halloween Vampire Mansion and it took such a long time, I was so tired. If I were to make that multiple times to sell it, it wouldn't be very productive. It just wouldn't be a good use of my time because the amount I would have to sell it for in order to make it worth it for me, it would be ridiculous. And I don't feel comfortable charging people that much. So if I were to sell my own sets in the future, I would work with a manufacturer and finding a manufacturer is a whole other ordeal because I want a manufacturer who's local, who's humane, you know, all of these ethical things going through my mind. I don't just want to pick a random factory and call it a day. Plus I have to actually draw these out, make 3D renderings, but I would absolutely love to do this. This will be my next big project when I do get to it. And it's gonna be really special. It's gonna have stories. It's gonna have my own personal touch, my own original characters. I have all of these going on in my head. This is from Swan Rasia Chotanepiwat. I highly, highly apologize. Hello to you and thank you for your question. If humans have to migrate to another planet and you can only take one thing with you, what is it? I am a very materialistic person. I'll admit it. I love having stuff. So given I can take my loved ones with me, my husband, my dogs, my family, and given I can take my phone with me because we can't go anywhere without our phones these days, okay? And given I can take, you know, necessities like food, wallet, necessities, okay? Given. I would, I would take my whole house with all my stuff in it. She also asked, could you show us your graphic design work or your artwork, please. I'm afraid you will find my graphic design a little boring. Okay, boring is the wrong word, but I design marketing collateral, things to get people to buy stuff or take some sort of action. I design a lot of landing pages, and these are very conversion focused. I'm already boring you, I know. I don't do a lot of illustrations because I actually don't like illustrating. I'm very impatient. And when I do illustrate, it's for my shops. As far as my actual works of art, this is making me realize that I don't draw as much as I used to. I do have a binder back when I was still in school full of my old drawings 
and I will show them on my channel one day. That's actually something I've been thinking about showing a lot. I just wasn't sure if it was going to be interesting enough. But basically in middle school and high school, I used to draw a lot. But yes, one day I will show them. I think they're still very cool and I wish that the old me was still kind of in me, but I have so much going on now that I don't need to add illustration into the mix because illustrating takes a very, very long time. And she also asked, could you please make more Polly Pocket repainting videos and DIY compact toys or any DIY related or not related to Polly Pocket? So my channel was originally supposed to be a crafting channel. Then my toy collection got the better of me and I just got way too excited about showing these. So I have done some crafting stuff. I've also done Polly Pocket repaints and I will do more repaints. I haven't repainted in a while because I just haven't had the energy lately to really sit down and do it. It does take a long time. The DIY stuff takes a long time. I basically have to film all day, which is extremely exhausting. And since YouTube isn't my full-time job, I have to film multiple days, which means I have to have all my equipment out because putting them away and putting them back out is a lot of work. It's a lot of work to just set up my camera alone. So yes, I will do more in the future as soon as I have enough energy to do it because right now I'm way too distracted by all of these toys, especially the new Polly Pockets. But rest assured, I will do more Polly Pocket repaints and DIYs. And this is the last question. I have been filming for so long now. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. This is from someone named Random Person. What's your favorite repainted Polly Pocket? And what brand of acrylic paint do you use? to restore your vintage Polly Pockets. My favorite repainted Polly Pocket is the dinosaur one because I went all out and tried to make a realistic looking scenery. Normally my style is very cartoonish, but I wanted to challenge myself with that compact and really try to make something that looks more realistic or semi-realistic to see if I could do it to see if I could push myself in that way. I thought it looked really cute, especially the fire, so I'm super happy with it. I just use regular cheap acrylic paint that you can get anywhere. I remember buying all of my acrylic paints at Michael's and they were like 50 cents. I don't think the brand matters, but then again, I haven't really tried any high-end brands because the cheap brands already work well for me. But I have been meaning to upgrade my acrylic paints because they're just very, very old. They're almost 10 years old. <sighs> I did it. I answered 99.9% .9 of those questions. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I think this is going to be a very long video. If you're still here, thank you for watching that whole thing. I hope you learned a little bit more about me and my collection. Before I go, I want to turn it over to you guys and ask you some questions. Number one, what are you looking forward to most in 2021? And number two, what are your New Year's resolutions? For me, what I'm looking forward to the most is to see how the world changes. Everything has been crazy. We all know what's been going on, but I am very curious and excited to see a lot of improvements that are going to be coming our way. And I am very optimistic. I think things will definitely improve and before we know it, we'll go back to normal. One of my new year's resolutions is to take more breaks. It's to rest more. I am extremely overworked. I work so many hours in a day not just with my full-time job, but with my shops, with my YouTube, which is why I highly appreciate every single one of you who watch my videos and who support my shops. Thank you guys for watching this video, for continuing to support my channel. I appreciate every single one of you guys. You're all wonderful people. I love all of your positive comments, and I love the fact that you guys share my love for Polly Pockets and toys. I am going to be doing a Q&A yearly, so at the end of 2021, I'll be doing another one of these. This was very fun for me. I love answering all of your questions. Once again, thank you guys so very much. Happy New Year and I'll see you next time.